We've been teasing this too for a while now, but you see, we get to everything eventually. The Sovo Zero has a tiny bed, yet you might see a surprisingly high range value for your bed mesh right out of the box. It's not that big of a problem, but if you want to fix it, I did two easy things to mine to get the bed's range from over 0.26 millimeters down to 0.08 millimeters. The best part? You only need to do this once. I'll show you how. I'm Gergo and you're watching a quick tip on Gergo Print 3D, our YouTube channel where my little nephew and I work together to get the best out of our 3D printers, laser machines and other related gadgets. Besides tutorials like this, we also show you project ideas and device reviews. Recently, YouTube started to auto-dub our videos into various languages. It's very exciting, but the translations are based on the subtitles. So our high-quality, curated, translation-ready subtitles are more important than ever, along with chapter markers to help you get the most out of this video as well. We were among the very first few to receive early beta units of the Sovo Zero back in January and we have already made a couple of videos about it. As I mentioned in our introductory episode, I was pretty disappointed in the surprisingly high height range of the bed mesh. A range over 0.264 millimeters on a 152 by 152 millimeter bed is pretty horrendous. That's as if your SU8 bed came with a range of several millimeters. Not nice. Now, it's very possible the production unit you get will be much better tuned, but even if it's not, you'll see the fix is quick and very easy. Looking at the height map, notice the bed is actually flat, but it's tilted both from front to back and from side to side. The front left corner is shown in red since it's way up, almost 0.12 millimeters higher than the zero level, while the back right is colored blue, being the lowest 0.14 millimeters below the zero level. If we can correct the tilt in both directions, we'll have a much flatter, almost perfect bed. But first, how do we get to this height map? We are lucky that Sovo keeps their printers fully open and accessible to us users, unlike some other brands that don't even allow this kind of access or hide this specific menu item from their web interface. Using a computer or mobile device connected to your local network, navigate to the IP address of your printer. In the console section of the dashboard or on the dedicated console screen, issue the command bed mesh calibrate. I recommend this instead of the menu item edit calibrate under advanced on the device screen since this won't heat up the bed. Thanks to the tiny size we don't really have to worry about warping due to heat expansion here. And scanning will start immediately and you won't need to wait for it to cool down to make the adjustments. Be sure, however, to thoroughly clean the bed before scanning as we don't want debris or layers of glue to interfere with our measurements. After scanning, the height map page will show the mesh. Let's start taking care of the side-to-side -side tilt first. In the height map, the zero, zero point is the front left. You can zoom closer into the graph to get a reading of the height at the middle of the right edge. See, in my case, it is negative 0.038 millimeters and a reading from the middle of the left side, which is plus 0.065 millimeters for me. 0.065 minus negative 0.038 means the right side is 0.103 millimeters lower than the left. Turn off and unplug the printer, remove the glass top, then lay it on its side. Being careful, the front door doesn't smash open. Remove the bottom cover after taking out the six screws holding it. You see the two lead screws always move together since they are coupled via this timing belt. That's great as it 
prevents them from going out of sync, but it also means any inaccuracy between the two sides is permanent. And this is what we are going to fix now. Sovo shows you one method in their recent video, but I think it's easier to just loosen the two grub screws in one of these pulleys. Now we can move the two lead screws independently. Remember, I have to raise the right side by about 0.1 millimeter. The thread pitch is two millimeters, so a full 360 degree turn would raise or lower the side by two millimeters. We don't need that much. We only need to adjust it by about 0.1 millimeter. So that's just a tiny fraction of a turn, about 1 20th counterclockwise on the right lead screw. Since we temporarily decoupled the two lead screws, the other side stays where it was. Hopefully we've eliminated the difference this way. Fasten both grub screws in the pulley. And here's a pro tip. You don't even need to flip the printer back on its feet. Just plug it in, turn it on, and rerun the bad mesh calibrate command. Thanks to the lightning fast eddy sensor, 12 seconds later, you can check your work. And you can readjust a few times until you get the two sides perfectly level. Just be sure to at least unlock the motors, but it's best if you turn off and unplug the printer while you are working inside it. This takes care of the left to right tilt, but we might also have some front to back slant as well. Before I tell you how I corrected that, however, please reward my efforts with a like below. Thank you if you did. To correct the remaining tilt, let's look at the height map again. We'll get a reading of the four corners this time. Front right is plus 0.036 millimeters, back right is negative 0.09 millimeters. Back left is negative 0.049 millimeters and front left is plus 0.112 millimeters. Take note that the back right is the lowest of these values at negative 0.09 millimeters. We want to lower the other corners to this level. Note these are simulated values now as I did not record the whole procedure when I initially did it. Lower the print bed about halfway so you have comfortable access above and below it. Then again, turn off and unplug the printer. It's even more important this time because of the bad heating wires. Also make sure both the nozzle and bed are cooled if you've recently heated them. Remove the four screws under the flexible build plate using an Allen key or hex screwdriver. The front left screw is attached to the pressure sensor under the bed. You don't really have to worry about it, but unlike the other three corners, this one has an M3 nut under the bed that you have to hold on to while the other three screws can just be removed using the Allen key. Now you can carefully leave the plate with the magnetic surface. The heating wire will prevent you from completely removing it, but you can flip it up to gain access to the four plastic standoffs in the corners. Only remove one at a time to keep track of them as they might already be slightly different lengths. Remember the values and calculate the amount each needs to be shortened. For example, let's say my front left standoff is 8.02 millimeters long, then I'd have to shorten it by about 0.2 millimeters to make that corner the same height as the lowest back right corner. I simply use sandpaper and remeasure with my digital caliper after a few strokes until I remove the exact amount. You can get a digital caliper like this from AliExpress for just a few dollars. Whoa! You can get a digital caliper like this from AliExpress for a few dollars. I will put links to good options in the description below. So I do the same for the other two corners. Of course, we don't touch the standoff for the lowest corner. It doesn't need to be adjusted. Once you're happy with the adjusted sizes, reassemble the bed. 
but uh, don't over tighten the screws. Redo the bed mesh and repeat the process a few times if necessary until you get the range under 0.1 millimeter. Always unplug before lifting the bed. From the second bed mesh onwards, I recommend also heating the bed to take heat expansion and warping into account. For differences of a few hundreds of a millimeter, you can also just play with the tightness of the screws. The ABL system is perfectly capable of correcting for even a 0.3 millimeter tilt in the bed, but your printed parts would still inherit this inaccuracy. This is especially important if you're planning to print precision parts, maybe using a 0.2 millimeter nozzle. We're planning to do that soon when we print fun keycaps for our mechanical keyboards. Both are smallest and largest printers will take part in this keyboard customization project and it will even involve this new Creality 3D scanner from Geek Buying. Stay tuned for that, toggle that notification bell below so you'll really get notified of our new videos. If you're looking to buy any of these machines we talk about in our videos, please use our affiliate links below. I do my best to find the best sources and even provide coupon codes where possible. You can also encourage us by becoming our sustaining supporters on Kofi.com. Use this link to connect with us there. The two hottest printers right now are the Sovol Zero and the SVO8 Max and each is getting more and more videos in their playlist. So let's go, Print 3D. Thank you for staying all the way to the end of this Gergo Print 3D video. Make it perfect.